Oracle Mobile Cloud Service episode, we're going to look at how to use the MCS Mobile Client SDK in your iOS applications so your iOS apps can work with MCS push notifications. Thanks for joining me, I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. In order to get our iOS applications to work with MCS notifications, there's essentially three broad tasks we must undertake. First, we must enable an app for Apple's push notification services with Apple itself. Second, we need to register our iOS app in the MCS user interface under the mobile backend. And then third, we need to configure our iOS app with the actual code to make use of push notifications. Each of these three broad tasks has a number of steps, and so we're going to drill into that in this specific video. Now, the first broad task is we need to enable our app for Apple's push notification services via Apple's iOS Development Center. Now, however, there's a little caveat. We need to take a step back and consider a restriction on building and testing a push notification iOS app. Typically, you as a developer undertake testing on the iOS simulator on your Mac while you're building your apps. However, the iOS simulator does not support testing push notifications. It's one of its restrictions. So instead, we need to deploy our iOS applications to a real iOS device to test the notification facilities. Because of this requirement, as an iOS developer, I'm sure you're aware then you need to have an Apple iOS developer or enterprise account. And via the Apple iOS developer center, you need to have already created a provisioning profile for your app and a development or distribution digital certificate, as well as having configured Xcode and your Mac keychain to work with these. Now, from our perspective, to give you instructions on how to create these, we require yet another video to discuss all of this. And besides, to be truthful, Apple's terms and conditions prohibit us from recording a video showing their websites for training purposes. Oh well. So we'll just leave you with a link to Apple's excellent documentation on the whole process. Bitly, we have a bitly link here, forward slash iOS app dist. Returning to our original goal though, Enabling your app for APNS, to do this you must enable the app's provisioning profile for push notifications in the Apple iOS Developer Center and create an APNS certificate separate to that required for deploying your app to the actual device. Now, MCS requires the APNS certificate is embedded in a .p12 file and is not protected by password, or in other words, the password is blank. Right, so once we've created the non-password protected P2L file, we're now ready to register the application for push notifications in MCS. For the purposes of this demo, we're going to assume we've already created a mobile backend and configured a Realm and mobile user to do this. So we'll log into the MCS user interface and open our specific mobile backend and hit the settings page and move down to the pre-existing register applications we can see at the bottom. Assuming an iOS registered app doesn't already exist, we click the register a new application link to open the dialog to in fact register our iOS application for the first time. For an iOS app, we select iOS as the platform and we specify the name of the application. We then enter an application ID, which for iOS is the bundle identifier for the application as configured in the app source code and Xcode under the general settings. Now I'm going to enter an internal Oracle bundle ID identifier here, so I can't show it to you because of course if I did, I'd have to kill you. So let's just assume it's something like com.oracle.mymcsdemo. Next, we choose the certificate type of either development or production when you created the APNS certificate in the Apple Developer Center, and then we click upload the P12 certificate. Next, we locate the non-password encrypted P12 certificate on the file system and click open to upload it. MCS will go then through a process of validating the certificate and it will display any error messages if it's not happy, but otherwise everything should be okay and we can click on register. Don't forget to copy the application key back into your applications omc.plist file. All right, so at this point we've completed the server side configuration. Now it's time to write some code, hallelujah. So this itself breaks down into four small steps, but let's cover the first one as it's fairly easy and we have already explained it in a previous episode. So in a previous episode, we showed you how to configure your native iOS application to work with the MCS Mobile Client SDK, and we're not gonna repeat all those instructions here. You can go and view that original video now. 
instead i will simply remind you to at a minimum add the mandatory mcs libraries and the mcs notifications library to the dependencies of your application otherwise your code will not compile in the following steps with the code that we're going to write having configured the libraries we then need to implement something called the device handshake the device handshake is responsible for signaling to MCS that a specific application, our iOS application, is running on a specific device and it's ready to accept notifications. In order to implement the device handshake, there are three steps to that process. First, we need to obtain a device token from APNS. Second, we need to authenticate with MCS itself. Finally, third, we will create an instance of the OMC notifications object in Objective-C and use it to register with the MCS server itself. So starting out, we need to obtain a device token. Incidentally, the device token is something that can change over time. So as a result, we must perform all three steps of the device handshake every time the application is launched. To achieve this, the best place to implement this is in the Applications App Delegate class. In the App Delegate header file, we add the following line of code property strong non atomic read only NS data device token data. So basically, a variable to hold, hold the device token. Then, in the relating App Delegate M file, we add code to register the settings for the user notifications raised on the device. This is not specifically MCS code, rather, it's a standard iOS way of doing things. As you can see, we first specify that the application will notify the user through a badge by making a sound and through visible alerts. I also wrote the scaffolding to handle notifications raised when the application is running in the foreground, and you can fill code in here later on if you want to do so. Next, we will override two methods generated by iOS. The first, did register for remote notifications with device token, is typically invoked when registration with the Apple push notification services is complete and it returns a device token which we need for the latter steps. From here, within the code, we retrieve the return device token and write it to our app delegates device token data instance variable we defined in the header file just a moment ago. The rest of the code is just there to format the token in a specific form for logging purposes. It's not essential. The important part here is the retrieval of the device token. The second method we will override is the did fail to register for remote notifications with error method. And as for the name, you can guess it's called if the device registration fails with APNS. For our demonstration purposes here, we'll just simply log an error message if this occurs. Having dealt with retrieving the device token from the APNS response, we need to now add specific MCS code to authenticate, then register for notifications with MCS. So returning to our code, we'll edit our app's view controller class. The first thing to do is to obtain a reference to the application's app delegate. Remembering that this stores our device token that we'll need in a moment. To do this, we first import the app delegate H class, and then we add an instance variable in the view controller to store the reference. And finally, in the view did load method, we retrieve and store a handle of the app delegate instance in the instance variable. Next, we start to add our MCS specific code. As such, we extend the view did appear method to call a custom method we're going to write now called authenticate and register. Within our custom authenticate and register method, we'll make the actual MCS calls. To register for push notifications with MCS, we must first authenticate the user, then register for push notifications separately. To authenticate the mobile user, unlike our examples in previous videos where we displayed a login screen, for demo purposes, once again, we're going to cheat. And in this case, I'm just going to hard code the mobile username and password, as you can see here. Since authenticating the mobile user is an asynchronous operation, we must define a successful completion block. Within that block, we then invoke the method to actually register for push notifications with MCS. To do this, we've defined another custom method, register for OMC notifications. This method will require we also import into the view controller the class OMC mobile backend OMC notifications. Returning to the register for OMC notifications method at top, we add two blocks that will be called if the MCS push notification registration is either a success or a failure. 
the actual registration is done in the last two lines of code of the method. The first line is simply to get an instance of the OMC notifications through a specific mobile backend. And as you can see here, we're using the default mobile backend as defined in the OMC plist file. The second line of code uses the OMC notifications instance to start the registration process. As you can see, the method requires the device token we extracted from the AppDelegate class, originally received from Apple's APNS, as well as the success and failure blocks we defined above. And that's it, well done. You now have an application that can handle and receive notifications from MCS, which come indirectly via APNS. If that doesn't justify you going and getting a pay rise from your boss, I don't know what does. So well done, you've configured everything that you need to in terms of iOS notifications through MCS. And as you can see, it's a relatively, again, a pretty simple process. I hope you've enjoyed this video. We'll catch you in the next one very soon.